Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamentals of testing. We are in chapter two talking about the software development life cycle and as a part of it today we are continuing ahead into the next segment of it which is 2.4 types of testing and here we'll be elaborating the whole tree of the classification which is a very confusing concept for a lot of us who are into testing as well as who are new to testing. So let's start exploring today that how we can classify testing into several category and what comes where in that particular classification. All right, so in this particular picture, the whole story of testing classification is elaborated to you. Let's listen patiently and try to understand that what exactly is the understanding of what the classification is all about. Number one, a lot of people when asked what, what, what are the types of testing, people come up with different opinions. Hey, the type of testing could be manual, could be automation, or sometimes they say that it is white box, black box, or sometimes I even get responses like unit testing, integration testing, other various types of of testing. No, the answer is absolutely wrong because classification of testing is all about the types of testing and it is classified into just two categories that is static testing and dynamic testing. Now number one thing to talk about is static testing where static testing is a non-executable mode of testing the work products. Now work products here simply mean the various documentations or even the code which is non-executable at some point will be reviewed and assessed for its correctness. And that's what you call it as static testing. Of course, static testing is not limited to code or design. Any work product, any documentation, which is created as a part of the overall life cycle, right from requirement, use cases, business models, user guides, or test cases, test plans, any sort of documentation which is created as a part of the overall life cycle is a good candidate of static testing. Why should I do static testing? Of course, to prevent defects. You can find defects much earlier in the life cycle without even waiting for the code to be executed. On the other hand, the second classification at this level is dynamic testing. As the name suggests, here we interact with the product. In simple terms, we are executing the code. And of course, these dynamic testing are performed once the implementation has happened. Static testing is prior to dynamic testing, helping you to identify a lot of anomalies in the work products which are prepared, which will be used as a basis for deriving your test cases for running the dynamic testing. That's the relationship between the static and dynamic, and we now pretty much understand that how exactly static and dynamic testing are different and the, are the primary classification of the types of testing. Now, if I deep dive into the static testing on the left side, we have the approach of conducting static testing as review. Review, very generic term, tells you that you're talking about reviewing the various work products which are written or created during the life cycle. Now, there are four different types of review, that is informal review, inspection, walkthrough, and technical review. In a sequence going from lightweight to heavyweight process is informal review, walkthrough, technical review, and inspection. Inspection is the most formal review process, whereas informal review, as the name suggests, is least formal review process. What are these reviews? What are these types of review? We'll be talking separately in detail in our upcoming sessions. On the other hand, if you look at the right side of it, we're talking about the dynamic testing. And here we don't have the types of testing or some kind of classification, rather it is called as the levels of testing. <clears throat> and the levels of testing, <clears throat> is component testing, which in simple term or in the software industry is called as unit testing as well. There are many other synonyms of component testing like program testing, module testing, class testing, structure testing, or sometimes even just functional testing. The next level is integration testing, which is conducted after the component testing. Then we have system testing and any other non-functional testing will be performed post that. Now, what are non-functional testing? Anything other than what you see on the screen right now is called as a non-functional testing, including performance, security, usability, accessibility, portability, adaptability, and whatnot. There are many levels, more than 50, which can be organized and conducted for a particular product. On top of it comes the acceptance testing. When you are done with everything, you ask the business to accept it by performing a level of test. Now, these are called as levels of testing. And the difference between the types and the levels is that 
types, you can choose any one of them relevant for that particular work product or that particular activity. But when it comes to the levels of testing, of course, we are talking about all of them and in the right order in the sequence, which is defined. You cannot skip anything. You cannot define your own you know, option that, hey, I just want to do component testing and I, want, I don't want to do system testing. No, it has to happen, all of them and in the right sequence. And that's why you call it as levels of testing under dynamic. Now, people several times come back and ask me that, all right, we understand your classification pretty much, but tell us where does the manual automation falls? The manual automation falls right at the top. These are two different approaches to conduct entire software testing. If you're doing it without any intervention of the tools, you call it as manual testing, which is interactive testing, or a user is trying to do the test directly by having the personal intervention. Whereas automation testing is done with help of the tool, where automated work will happen, you provide the instructions to the tool and the tool will do the necessary job for you, right? So the two different approaches to conduct entire software testing is manual and automation. Whereas on the dynamic side of it, we do have two different approaches. In order to do the whole dynamic testing, we have two different approaches to perform it, white box and black box. Where white box simply means that when a person who has the understanding of the backend code and performs the testing at the code level is called as white box testing approach. Now, generally, a developer will be responsible for doing that, given the developer is the person who has the understanding of the code. On the other hand, if a person is performing testing on the front end, that is user interface, then this person will be doing it at the front end by providing the necessary inputs and seeking the desired output. Now, this approach is what you call it as black box testing approach. And the whole dynamic testing can use any of these approaches. It's nowhere a classification, it's nowhere a rule that unit testing is a type of white box or white box is a type of unit testing, not at all. It's just a myth, it's just a confusion which people have because unit testing as a best practices uses white box testing approach. Whereas system testing makes use of black box testing approach. But it is not a classification. It's a best practice. Today, if you are using white box testing for unit testing, you never know. Tomorrow, the best practice changes and it can be done using black box testing as well. So there are no such further classification that the levels of testing fall under uh, the two different approaches. No, the whole dynamic testing can be performed with any of these approaches. Yes, of course, there is a further classification which we have on the high level is functional and non-functional for the levels of testing which we'll be covering in the next chapter. So we will be talking about in more detail about this classification further as we step into this. Finally, there are two more topics which I have on the screen right now which is called as verification and validation. On this classification itself, on the left side, whatever you see that is static testing and the types of review is called as verification. Verification is a process of measuring the correctness of what you are building up. The measuring of correctness simply means that when I'm writing the requirement, when I'm building up the design, when I'm creating algorithms, writing flowcharts and any other use case, business model, etc., are they correct or not, right? It has nothing to do with the requirement right now, nothing to do with the expectation, and it's just limited to the correctness of what you're building up. For example, if I've asked you to create a program to add two numbers, and if the program is able to add two numbers, is what we are talking about verification. On the other hand, if you see the right side of it, it's called as validation. And this is where we review or finally validate that what exactly was the expectation of the customer, that is user needs. And here, we're just not limited to correctness, we are talking about completeness and appropriateness too. That simply tells us that, hey, though you built a program for adding two numbers, was this exactly the customer expectation? What if they were expecting multiplication of two numbers? Then verification passed, though your program is doing a good addition, but validation failed, right? So verification and validation are very you know, commonly heard with two golden statements that, are you building the product right? Are you building the right product? When you say product right is correctness, which is verification. If I say right product, it is validation, which is about dynamic testing, right? 
So this is what the basic classification to tell you the clarity that what exactly are we expecting from the overall system. I hope you have a good understanding of what exactly classification of testing is all about now. We'll be deep diving into each one of them, one after the other, as we proceed with our learning. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.